With YouTube demonetizing independent media, please consider becoming a patron today for just a dollar per month. Link below. So this one here, this one is, is interesting to me because uh, 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 it doesn't seem like it's on point for, for Fast and Furious. Now, Fast and Furious Hobbs and Shaw spinoff will be more grounded, apparently. Right now, it's funny that they have to say that considering where the Fast and Furious franchise has gone. Go back. Let's go back in the time machine to 2001, June 2001, Fast and Furious hits theaters. I know this because I was working at a theater at the time and every single racer in San Diego, which, by the way, had the largest street racing scene, illegal street racing scene in the country with over 750 cars that would be cruising around on a Saturday night looking to race. It was a whole weird thing. Anyway, the movie came out glorified street racing, but also played it straight. It was straightforward. It was point break, but with cars and, you know, and, and that was it. Muscle cars, street cars, racers. That was it. Then you get the sequel. The sequel was a little bit more futuristic. John Singleton bringing a little bit more gadgets to the, uh, to, to the mix, right? And a bit more stylized, but then Justin Lin brought it back with Tokyo Drift, kind of brought it back into this more grounded universe. And then, and then Fast and Four was a little bit over the top. Fast Five was, oh dear God. Okay. Fast Six. Wow. How long was that runway? By all accounts, it was about 120 some odd miles was the speed and length of the time of the movie. And then you get number seven, which, you know, at this point, they're basically just superheroes. And then number eight. Oh, yeah, I'm waiting for Vin Diesel just to go Super Saiyan at this point. But I don't care because I'm a big fan of the franchise. I will be there for Fast and Furious 9. I will be there for Hobbs and Shaw. I'm in it. I've been in it for, for 17 years now. Apparently, I need more of a life. But the, I just want to kind of point out the grounded aspect of these movies. It's funny that they have to kind of go back to that. Now, it says here, with Deadpool 2 hitting theaters today, uh, director David Leitch will likely have to start focusing on the Fast and Furious spinoff featuring Luke Hobbs, Dwayne Johnson, and Deckard Shaw, Jason Statham. Universal has set the release date for July 26, 2019, with filming slated to begin this fall. Uh, Leitch revealed that uh, his spinoff will be more grounded than the Fast and Furious franchise it has spawned from. And this is what he says. He says, I think it's going to be a bit more grounded because it's the beginning. It's not an or, or it's, it's an origin story in a sense. It's, it's not an origin story, but we're starting a franchise. So we want to be a little bit more grounded, a little bit more uh, character centric. We're going to set the set up the stakes for these guys in their relationship, but we're also going to have some great set pieces and some action that you'd expect from this type of franchise. Okay, so let's kind of break that down for a hot second here. So it's 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 an origin story, but it's also not an origin story because The Rock has been in it since Fast Five, uh, Jason Statham, Fast and Furious Seven, and then Fast and Furious Eight, where he went from being the bad guy to being the good guy. Then his brother, who was a bad guy in number six, was also a good guy in number eight. I'm just waiting for some point in time Charlize Theron to go from being the bad guy from eight to being a good guy in like nine or ten. Because that's kind of the way that the that's kind of the way this the, the Fast and Furious franchise operates. It's all like you are my enemy, but now you are my brother. And that's kind of what's going on here. But I will say one of the big shining moments of Fast and Furious 8 was the scenes with with Hobbs and Shaw. They were funny. They were great. I love Jason Statham. I have ever since Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels from 1999. I love The Rock. I have ever since The Rundown in 2003. And I'm glad to see that they're teaming up because those scenes were freaking funny. And I felt really bad when it got to the end of Fast and Furious 8 and they didn't have their goodbye scene, right? Like they, if they shot it, they never made it into the movie. Vin Diesel was kind of being a bit of a megalomaniac at that point in time, but it's basically his franchise. So whatever. But anyway, so he says they want to be a bit more character centric and they want to kind of set up their relationship and then kind of build up from there. So this to me feels a bit more like uh, like a Tango and Cash lethal weapon buddy cop situation, right? Where we know that Hobbs will definitely be like the Stallone in Tango and Cash, very straight laced, very by the book, whereas Kurt Russell will be, you know, uh, wait, I forget which one it was, but he'll be the other one, the other Tango or Cash. I forget right now. But then, he, or if we want to put it to lethal weapon terminology, uh, you know, The Rock is Murtaugh and, uh, and and Jason Statham is Riggs. Okay, so there's that. Like, it's going to be that kind of dynamic. And what I, what I would argue would be someone similar to the Shane Black dynamic. And that honestly is who they should model this after, make it more fun, make it more fresh, and still kind of keep it grounded. But when it also comes to being grounded and having good set pieces, this is where David Leitch is going to come into play. One of the reasons why he was chosen to direct Deadpool 2 is because of his work on John Wick and Atomic Blonde, where he took these these uh, low-budget, kind of shoestring-budgeted films and made them look like they were much bigger than life 
and had the action sequences very well choreographed and very well shot. And I think we're going to see quite a bit of that. Now, F. Gary Gray in the prison scene in Fast and Furious 8 did a great job directing that action. The, what they did in that scene was pretty was pretty fun. It was just fun. Um, but think of, of that type of scene, but more you know, more in your face punching, more in your face fighting, atomic blonde, John Wick style of stuff here. That's what we're going to be talking about. Like imagine if those of you who've seen, um, Deadpool two, the, 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 the shootout with the, with the interns, right at the, uh, at the, at the home, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, those guys like that, how that scene was done. You, that's what a lot of this is going to be like. It's going to be a lot of showing, um, it kind of fully play out versus uh, quick cuts and fast action. Um, now it says here that, uh, so he says here, we're also driving into their world. I think we want to have our own take on the fast universe. It will definitely have its own, its elements of original DNA, but it's more drifting into Shaw's spy world and Dwayne's agent world. And obviously we want to build their relationship, their conflict, their banter, that chemistry that they have between them. That's what's sort of driving the movie. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of that back and forth. You know, uh, Hobbs being more the straight man. I'm an agent. I'm here to protect the law. I'm, you know, I <laughs> almost did the I am the law. I just that's kind of him. Whereas it's going to be a little bit more fast and loose on Statham side of things, being an agent, having a bit more, you know, the license to kill sort of thing. So I feel like that's going to be a nice dynamic between them. And as long as they keep it very grounded in terms of not going too over the top, I think it's going to work out all right. So the the Chris Morgan, who's written every Fast and Furious film, uh, is writing the script here. So I think I, I, I can, I think what we're going to see is a, a lot of big action, uh, but with very stylized fight pieces. Um, and, uh, but there isn't much else known about the script. Uh, the movie comes out in uh, uh, next year and that's going to be followed up by uh, Fast and Furious 9 in 2020 and the final installment happening in uh, 2021. Um, now when, uh, uh, so yeah, this is basically about it with that one. And I'm excited for it. I am. I'm super excited. I want to see what they're going to do with this. I want to see exactly how it's going to be handled. And I want to see uh, what kind of stuff they're going to bring to the table to make it uh, entertaining. And I think that I think this creative team uh, is going to be good. But but also not having Vin Diesel involved is also going to be interesting to see how it kind of plays out with that. So, you know, July 26th of next year. Not so bad. Right. We don't, we don't have that much time to wait. I think it's going to be a lot of fun and I'll be there. I'll be there day one. Huge ass grin on my face going like, bring on Hobbs and Shaw. Cause I'm just, I'm that kind of nerd and, uh, I'm okay with it. 